Who wants the beastification of YouTube? Let's look at Mr. Beast first. Mr. Beast wants to maximize or to optimize or not really to maximize or optimize. He just wants to use the current algorithm. He just, within the set framework that is the algorithm, he just basically discovered the loophole of applying methods of preventing people from clicking off, making good thumbnails and things like these. So basically he is just using the system. He is playing the system that is set by YouTube. YouTube sets the rules and Mr. Beast is just a very good player. Now, in terms of his own interest, of course he wants to use his strategy, but he wants to be the only one who uses this strategy. This is called game theory. If he is the only one that uses this strategy and no one else knows about the strategy, then he has a comparative advantage compared to the other people. Therefore, he makes better videos. But since these videos are public, other people can copy. And also because Mr. Beast gives interviews again and again and again and explains what he actually is doing, others can copy. YouTube is maybe happy that someone brings in the views. So this is the one side. Mr. Beast is just a very good player. So if you had a game, let's say you want to make lemonade. This is the example we now set up. You want to make lemonade. Then you realize that, so there is standard lemonade, but you, re you get, you get insight, special insight, or you have an idea, or you analyze the market again and again and again, and you realize the more sugar you pour into the lemonade, the better this lemonade is accepted by the people because they like the sweet taste. They get accommodated to the sweet taste and they potentially also get addicted to the sweet taste. They get, they become fat over time and they just become addicted to sugar. Now, Still, you are selling more and more lemonade because more and more people get addicted. Of course, this now has negative traits and some of these negative traits, I would also say, apply to this. Maybe not to the extent that people get addicted, but people probably also kind of display a very similar behavior when it comes to refreshing Mr. Beast's, Mr. Beast's channel page, for example. Pouring in the sugar is the thing that is the rational decision to make. Because if there are five creators, for example, that each want to create lemonade, they all want to create the best lemonade. And if one person figures out only pouring in one gram of sugar per 100 gram more yields a better revenue and therefore maybe also a better profit because the clients come back because they are actually liking the product. But over the long term, this might not be the ideal strategy. But in the mi short and midterm, this is the ideal strategy. But once the others find out what the secret recipe is, the beastification, then they also begin to apply. This is called competition. And this is actually very similar to a market. And this is a market. YouTube is a market that is set by the governments of these worlds. So now YouTube is happy that someone actually sells the lemonade because YouTube is the state. YouTube gets a revenue share with every sold product. With every sold product, YouTube sells ads to people and these ads bring in revenue because advertisers pay YouTube to display these ads to people. So therefore YouTube is interested in people playing the game very well. And Mr. Beast plays the game very, very well. I would even argue he is currently the best player on YouTube. Of course, there are other players, but these other players don't have such a good strategy as Mr. Beast has. These other players, sometimes there might be luck involved. Sometimes it just might be persistency. But if you, for example, take PewDiePie, who has a now very similar subscriber count to Mr. Beast, I think they are both, I think Mr. Beast is 103 million and PewDiePie is somewhere around 100 million, maybe a little bit above. And now what happens, so what I wanted to say with PewDiePie is that he also played the game.
But if PewDiePie, for example, applied a strategy similar to Mr. Beast, then he would probably grow again. But Mr. Beast did this within the time span of a few years. PewDiePie took way longer for getting to 100 million subscribers. So now YouTube is very happy because YouTube is the state and with every business within a state that is then taxed by the government, it also brings in revenue in terms of tax and the YouTube tax is the revenue share model YouTube has. So now YouTube on the one side is happy. On the other side, YouTube as the government also wants people to be happy in the long term, very similar to our actual government. Because the actual government is interested not so much in the long term because most, at least democratic states, are or have represented. And the people within these democracies that are representing the people, called politicians, are interested in getting elected again. So therefore, this is also not a long term strategy actually. Because no one actually is interested in the long term well being of a state, including the citizens. But now with YouTube, now applying this to YouTube, I think YouTube needs to switch. And this switch needs to happen, I guess, sooner and sooner, not sooner and sooner, but this switch needs to happen within the next few years. If YouTube continues on this route of making people as addicted as possible to their app, and the same is true for TikTok, and TikTok even has now a better strategy. TikTok is basically the beastification of YouTube in terms of the business model of YouTube. Not in terms of a player, but in terms of a player in the bigger picture of a video distribution platform. Within a certain economy, which is the world economy, there are video platforms. And video platforms also have strategies. And TikTok just figured out a better strategy and therefore is growing much quicker than YouTube, even though YouTube, just like PewDiePie, is still the bigger player who has the more conservative approach, but now also tries to implement these newer things. PewDiePie, on the other hand, just said, I'm out, I'm basically quitting, but I also still want to continue to make videos. If this happens to YouTube, is written in the stars. But what I'm trying to say here is, YouTube, on the one hand, benefits in the short to midterm from Mr. Beast, and not therefore also off or from the strategy that Mr. Beast is currently applying. But in the long term, governments and people will realize that becoming addicted to YouTube is not something they actually want. Of course, internet addiction is not something that is really established as a, as a psychological condition yet. There are different versions of this in the, in the two different, so there are two different books where all the psychological illnesses are listed in within these two books there is i think something like internet addiction already but i think the science still is trying to play catch up with something like tiktok why can't people stop scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling this is in the words of andrew huberman similar to a monkey who is just sitting in a corner and trying to dig something into a corner or or a, a dog that is in a corner in a room, let's say a cage, and he's just digging in a corner again and again and again. That's basically what we are doing. Even though we say of ourselves that we are much smarter, way smarter than a dog. But nevertheless, this is what we're doing. We open these, up these apps and just like the dog, just the other way around, because the dog digs something and we scroll something, try to get this dopamine kick. And once the science catches up and once people realize and I don't want to get to YouTube is the most evil business in the world or TikTok is the most evil business in the world style here, style here. But what I'm trying to say is that YouTube needs to switch its strategy. This strategy of making people, of making the content more and more engaging by words having pop up here and here and here and then music rising and the music falling down and then after 10 seconds cutting to another track and then within these 10 seconds 20 different shots like doom 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 of course maybe we also adapt as a species maybe we for example could consume videos in with higher information speed with higher data rate speed and we then eventually we'll be able to consume these speeds. But currently we are kind of used to the talking speed of someone one to one. And therefore these things, because they are hyper realistic, are more addicting than real life conversations. 
which makes them in comparison and also your life in comparison or the life of people in comparison less rewarding in terms of the dopamine system in terms of the reward system where the dopamine system is part of the reward system we have installed so now what i think is this youtube needs to switch the strategy and instead of optimizing for short to midterm engagement and views it needs to basically help people that's the that's the overarching goal i think to be satisfied in the long term you could also say it needs to help people to get the most out of youtube over their lifetime and maybe the lifetime at some point in time actually is infinite if we actually reach escape velocity which is the concept that with every year if we reach the point where with every year we don't age the biological age is not another year but is actually less than a year then we reach escape velocity not no that's actually not escape velocity escape velocity is the state in which with every year you gain another year because of the advancements of of technology so basically if you are now 50 and you live live to your chronological age of 51 you would then again live another year because technology has advanced and now can keep you alive even though you have cancer and or can treat the cancer or something like this youtube therefore needs to switch to a long-term strategy that optimizes probably for long-term growth for people's happiness in the long term and not for short-term happiness like similar to the lemonade again the lemonade manufacturer also needs to switch maybe in the long term to something that is more healthy mr beast actually does this at least partially with his chocolate with the feastables he also implements the strategy instead of making this thing very addictive he actually added a lot of kind of healthy things and this makes the chocolate bar mr beast actually developed a kind of a healthier version of chocolate you could argue that the mr beast burger is not really that healthy and i also don't know what ingredients they use but i think it is very similar to the lemonade a lemonade business is something that is very short term and i think there are now there is now this new company in the us or in the or around the world it's called le crocs or something like this which is basically a healthy version of lemonade which optimizes for long-term health for lifespan for health span instead of the short-term gain from dopamine whenever you drink 50 grams of sugar in a lemonade bottle we also have the other creators and the other creators don't want the beastification actually why because if someone puts in more sugar into their lemonade and it sells more because people like the sweetness and get addicted to it and potentially become fat but still are not able to get rid of the taste and get rid of the craving for lemonade then the other people sell less lemonade now this assumption the assumption we just had in the background of this scenario is that there is basically a given cake a given pie and everybody can get a piece of this pie but maybe because the human population is still developing and therefore there are just more customers over time maybe because the economy just in general grows and therefore people have a more budget maybe because there are also other factors that influence this decision a fixed pie is maybe not the ideal model for an economy or for a lemonade business so therefore the other creators are in the short term or in the short term need to adapt they need to adapt to this beastification because if there is a better lemonade that tastes sweeter that in the short term at least seems to be more entertaining more engaging then if the others don't like make the lemonade more entertaining and more engaging and have things popping up and music and soundtracks switching up every 10 seconds and shots switching up every second then the lemonade of these other creators just won't sell as well 